Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the United States Capitol. The Congressional Gold Medal is one of our oldest traditions here in the Capitol. It is the highest civilian honor that this body can bestow. Today, pursuant to S-1555, we award this medal to the Filipino veterans of World War II. Over 250,000 Filipino men responded to the call of then-President Roosevelt to join the U.S. Armed Forces in the Far East to defend democracy during World War II. Millions died during this war, but for the thousands who survived, sacrificed, and risked their lives, their recognition came in 75 years later. On October 25, 2017, a Congressional Gold Medal was awarded to the Filipino World War II veterans by the U.S. Congress, and this is the highest civilian award given by the U.S. government. What does this Congressional Gold Medal mean to the veteran, to their families, and to the immigrant community? Join me in today's episode of Pusong Pinoy's America as we hear them talk about the significance of this Congressional Gold Medal. Ako po si Attorney Lutan Cinco, ang yung kabalikat sa paghubog ng yung kinabukasan sa Amerika. Sandigan ng bawat mamamayang emigrante ng Pilipino. Ito ang Pusong Pinoy sa Amerika. Pusong Pinoy sa Amerika, kasama ng bawat isa. Sandigan ng mamamayang kabalikat sa kinabukasan. Emigrante ng Pinoy sa Amerika, may Pusong Pinoy sa Amerika. During World War II, 250,000 brave Filipino men fought to defend their homeland against Japanese imperialism. U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt promised full military benefit for their services. But in 1946, the Recession Act was passed, stripping the veterans of their full benefits. Since then, the Filipino veterans fought for their full recognition and equity. Several bills were introduced, but no equity bill has been passed to this day. In 2009, the Filipino Veterans' Equity Compensation was passed into law that will provide lump sum of $15,000 to Filipino veterans in the United States and $9,000 to the veterans in the Philippines. Yet, around 40% of the applicants were denied compensation because their records of service are missing. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Isang malaking karangalang ipaalam sa inyo na ang Department of Homeland Security ng Estados Unidos ay inihayag ang tungkol sa programang parol para sa mga veteranong Pilipino ng ikalawang digmaang pangdaigdig o FWVP. In July 2016, the Filipino Veterans Parole Policy Program was implemented by the Obama administration to help unify the families of veterans, but many are not able to avail because of their inability to meet the legal requirements. And recently, on December 14, 2016, the Filipino Veterans of World War II Congressional Gold Medal Act of 2015 was signed into law awarding a Congressional Gold Medal collectively to Filipino veterans of World War II. To many veterans, this came too late. But for those who are around, this medal has a deeper meaning to them as they recall their services during the war. Lourdes Poblete Lourdes Poblete was only 18 years old when she joined the guerrilla unit in 1942. When the war broke out, my dad left to join the military and went with the Bataan to fight the Japanese. In 1942, it was the fall of Bataan and a family friend who escaped from the death march went to Mindanao to talk with Colonel Wendell Perte. When he was there, he was asked to organize the 10th military district on the LOD unit to be organized in the Philippines. It started from there. We were inducted in 1942 
until December of 1945. That was really hard. My job was in the propaganda corps. You are going to distribute all these newspaper clippings from Mindanao, which tells you what's going on about the war, give you news about where the soldiers are, where the concentration camps are, and if there are still names of soldiers that are still alive that did not die during the death march. And that's not the only job, you know. You have other things. I was asked to work in a Japanese firm to find out what's going on in a Japanese military establishment. Well, while there, I was asked to work in a big warehouse. My job was to find out how many things are being sent, how many boxes of medicine, ammunition, arms, clothes, how many soldiers live in a big truck, how many is coming back. I know there is something going on because we were in a cell as big as this, bigger than this. When you are accepted by the Japanese, the requirements are your Japanese ID, your lunch, your money, no paper, no pencil, no lipstick. Because they said with the lipstick, you ladies can write out some records. So that's what we do. Yoka Joansis was only 19 years old when he joined the new Philippine Scouts on May 17, 1946. He went through a rigid tactical training under the U.S. Armed Forces of the Far East. From the beginning, when I uh, was enlisted in the Philippine Scouts, uh, we had uh, training, walking for long distances, and we don't mind getting hungry doing those, all this training. So it was really hard being trained under the United States Army. I was assigned in Okinawa, Japan. Mr. Ansis belonged to the guerrilla unit 575. According to him, he recalls handling ammunition from 45 caliber rifles to 240 pounds cannons used during the war. During the training, he was assigned to handle 81 millimeter mortar gunners as a result of which had caused him serious injury to his ears. Magdaleno Duenas, a World War II guerrilla, helped Americans escape from captivity. The way you, you march oh, from Davao oh, all the way to San Yun? To Bishanish, Occidental, Oriental. Oriental. Tell to me about Med that. Medina and the police of Ambassador Pilesh, uh -huh. uh, Emanuel. So how long it took you to walk? Well, one and a half. One and a half. One and a half days? Month. You walk for <laughs> Oh my God. The recognition of the sacrifices and bravery of the Filipino veterans took place only after 75 years. Luis Antonio, executive director of the Veterans Equity Center, described the lobbying efforts taken for the veterans to receive this recognition. Until October 25th, the Filipino veterans have felt that the United States have forgotten their valor, their sacrifices, everything that they have done to help the United States win the campaign in the, in the Pacific. And that's the reason why this single congressional gold medal, it is a thank you. It is a symbol that the United States is saying, we recognize your service and we would like to thank you for the sacrifices that you have made for this country. In 2000, when we were starting advocating for the equity bill, there are only few ways to reach out to the congressional representatives. You need to make your phone call, you need to fax, but this day and age of social media, it made the advocacy and it made this campaign a little bit easier. It was easier to reach out to congressional representatives through change.org, Twitter, and social media. So 
I believe that those different ways that we have used to advocate really did, you know, a major difference in making sure that, you know, we garner enough support to pass the uh, congressional um, gold medal legislations. Major General Antonio M. Taguba, retired U.S. Army and a son of a Filipino World War II veteran, led a group of Filipino veterans advocates nationwide and organized the Filipino Veterans Recognition and Education Project, or the PhilVet Rep. With more than 30 national organizations and veterans advocacy groups, PhilVet's Rep's 11 board of directors and his executive committee all work together to push for the passage of this Congressional Gold Medal. Finally, the formal ceremony awarding the gold medal took place on October 25, 2017 at the Emancipation Hall of the U.S. Congress at Washington, D.C. We all witnessed a bipartisan support from the legislators in recognizing the Filipino World War II veterans. Present during the event were congressional leaders of both the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. Let us pray. 250,000 Filipinos answered President Roosevelt's call to duty. Most had no formal training. Many had never even picked up a weapon before, but they risked, and in the case of so many, gave their lives fighting under our stars and stripes. And of those one quarter million who served, nearly one in four would perish in that titanic struggle. Our country asks a lot of the more than 250,000 Filipino World War II veterans. Yet those brave men who promised citizenship and fair compensation bravely took up arms, risking life and limb on behalf of a country not yet their own. In return for their valor and sacrifice, the American government promised them citizenship and the benefits entitled to all veterans. Who? after winning a bloodstained victory alongside our countrymen, came home to a country that would soon rescind the benefits and the recognition they were promised. For seven decades, Filipino veterans fought for the compensation they had earned. For too long, their justice was denied and not fully respected. Over these decades that have passed, these heroes have persevered, have continued to serve, have contributed greatly to the beautiful, diverse fabric that makes up our country. Our country has a responsibility to recognize those who put their lives on the line, and this Congressional Gold Medal is a symbol of our gratitude. After far too long a delay, we honor them today. Today, we commemorate their service and remember their sacrifice. I'm honored and proud that we can be here today to finally right this wrong. These are the heroes we recognize today for their valor, for their sacrifice in what is the highest civilian honor that the United States Congress can bestow. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell recognized the communal bond of our veterans in his speech. In victory, they marched on. In defeat, they kept hope close. In resistance, they held aloft the spirit of a people. Thanks to many brave efforts of the Filipino people, allied forces would go on to win the struggle in the Pacific. The sacrifices they made were crucial, not just to their ultimate freedom, but to ours as well. With the gold medal we present today, we're paying tribute to a selfless sacrifice. We are remembering the indomitable spirit of a Pacific people. We are preserving for generations hence this enduring reminder of valor and of honor, this powerful symbol of a nation's gratitude. Let each of us stand united today in saying these two simple yet powerful words, thank you. More than 500 veterans, families, and supporters were present at the Emancipation Hall, Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., to witness the presentation of the Congressional Gold Medal to our Filipino veterans, the highest civilian award given by U.S. Congress. 
This event that took place shall be part of our written history so that the next generations will understand the value of the contribution of our Filipino soldiers during World War II. We can influence history being written. If our history is not acknowledged, we need to fight hard in order to rewrite history with the truth. So it's important for us to learn about our history in the past, but also seek to learn from previous generations on how to continue to advocate for wrongs in the past and how we continue to advocate for our issues moving forward. The passage into law of the Congressional Gold Medal for World War II veterans is attributed to a bipartisan support. It is an indication that in these days and times, it is still possible to set aside differences in support of common good, such as the effort to honor our heroes. We have some different our differences, but on this and coming together in support of this recognition, we were all together, so I'm proud of this moment. The collective Congressional Gold Medal shall be given to the Smithsonian Institute for display and will be made available for research. 1,000 replica medals were produced by the U.S. Mint to award to veterans and their next of kin. Major General Antonio Taguba, together with other generals of the U.S. Army, distributed more than 500 replica medals after the formal ceremonies at the Emancipation Hall. Since the population of this greatest generation of veterans is quickly diminishing, the necks of kin of veterans were allowed to receive the replica gold medals. To Ken Jan Lor Bruan. The youngest recipient of the gold medal that day was Jan Lor Bruan, 22 years old, who was happy to receive his medal for his 91-year-old veteran grandfather. I'm so overwhelmed and this is my, this is it moment for, you know, to repay my grandfather. The historic event ended with a gala dinner hosted by Philbet Rep where more than 500 guests from all over the country celebrated the historic event. They earned every bit of those congressional gold medals. Thank you to our veterans of the Filipino heritage tonight. Since most of those veterans who wanted to travel to the capital were not able to come, San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee and the Philbet Rep held an awarding ceremony of the Congressional Gold Medal at the City Hall of San Francisco during the Filipino Heritage Month. Lourdes Poblete. 93-year-old veteran Lourdes Poblete was one of those who received the gold medal at the San Francisco City Hall. I was very much surprised, but I felt very honored. As a veteran, I am extremely happy and thankful. Whatever it will be, will be. But most of all, remember to love country. For the veterans, their survivors, and the next of kin who wants to receive the Congressional Gold Medal, they have the opportunity to do so. If you have not applied for the Congressional Gold Medal, please reach out to us, fieldvetrep.org. It has all of the information there. We made a commitment to each and every single Filipino World War II veteran that they will not purchase their medal. So there's a fundraising effort through Field Vet Rep uh, to make sure that if you, we appeal to your generosity and if you can help us uh, defer the cost of the Congressional Gold Medal. With all the festivities and joy felt by the veterans during the historic moment, the question that is often raised is, what is next after this recognition? Will this be the end of the veterans issue? Washington, D.C.'s longtime veterans advocate and political consultant, Irene Bueno, gives her opinion on the significance of this event. Become a citizen, register to vote, and then help to fight the future fights, which are making sure that, um, that the family members can join the veterans here in the United States, make sure that the veterans who still haven't got it, gotten any kind of benefits get their benefits, and to undo the Rescission Act altogether, because that was wrong. 
also doing the curriculum development through the Bataan Legacy Historical Society and the Filipino Veterans Recognition Education Project, which I'm also a member of. I'm really hoping to do that because I am on the advisory committee for, for both. And we want to make sure the story is clear that Filipinos played a very significant role in the fight in the Philippines against the Japanese. Pusong Pinoy's America honors those who fought and died during the war, the survivors of Bataan Death March, and those who passed away without receiving the gold medal, and who are deserving of this recognition. To all Filipino World War II veterans, thank you for your service, and to the other generation of veterans, we salute your courage and honor you for risking your lives so that we may enjoy freedom and democracy. Maraming salamat po. I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and member of a team. I believe I serve the people of the United States. I will always place the mission first before all others. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade behind. To my fellow soldiers, present and many who could not be here to our families. Thank you for sharing this glorious day. As the saying goes, old soldiers never die. They just fade away.